Hello and welcome, John here. In this video, we're going to look at the step-by-step -step process of creating JSON credential keys for a Google account. This can be important, especially when you're doing a migration where we'd need our Google Workspace to be migrated to Microsoft 365 or any other reason that you might find this to be very useful. So provided you're logged in with your super user account, you could simply go ahead and access console that is console.cloud.google.com. There we go. All right, and once you're in here, the first thing that you need to do is to create a project. So here we are, we have project information, resources below here, APIs, Google Cloud platform status, etc. But for easy access, we could simply go to the menu over there and access the IM admin. And from here, we can simply go to manage resources. This is where we'll be able to create that project. So click on manage resources over there. And in this area, we have a list of projects that are currently existing. And if we needed to delete any project for whatever reasons, we simply go over there and click on delete. However, when we're deleting projects, we might actually be required to provide the project ID before we can actually do that. Please note that these projects may only be deleted after a period of 30 days. All right. So fair enough. We'll leave that as is and proceed to create our own project. So we'll click on create project over there. And in this case, we simply have to give it that name. So this is going to be JSON K okay, credentials. That's what we want to create, right? So once we have that in place, we should also specify the organization. And this is for a fictitious company, junctiontechnology.co.za. All right. And we can also set up a location if we need to. But this isn't really compulsory. So I'll simply go ahead and hit that create button. All right, so once that is created, notice that it's creating over here, it should be populated in this area, although it may take a few seconds or even a minute for it to be populated in that space there. And as we wait, I'm going to tell you a joke. <laughs> just kidding. All right, so uh, let's just head to the menu. We simply have to go to the next step, which is turning on the APIs for the service account. So I simply have to select our project. Oops, not yet here. So we have to go and see if we can still see something in that area. Come on, let's see. All right, it's still coming up. Um, all right, so there we have project one. Now, this is not what we are working on. We'd like to work on the other project, which is the JSON one. And there it is. Great. So uh, we're going to select the JSON credentials project. All right, we've selected it it's over there. So once it's here, then we can go ahead and just click on our menu. And here we have to turn on the API. So go to API services and then click on library. All right, so once we're here, we simply have to hand for the various APIs that we simply want to enable and then click on those APIs and enable them. And if you happen not to find what you're looking for, you can simply use the search area over here. For example, I want to make use of the Google Workspace migration for Microsoft Exchange. I had not seen to see that. I also want to make use of the Google Calendar resource. So let's see if I could easily get that. It must be Google Calendar resource. Oh, okay, there we go. So simply click on that API and we must have a button that allows us to enable it. Once it's enabled, we can go to the next API until we've covered all the APIs that we want to make use of. All right, so once we've enabled all those APIs, the next step is for us to set up the all of content screen. So for us to be able to achieve this, we simply go back to the menu and locate API service. And over here we have all of content screen. So click on that. Under user type, we have an option to select whether internal or external. And if we go with the internal option, it simply means that only users within our organization will be able to access this. And for any testing purposes, anybody who is not part of our organization will not have access to that. But if you happen to be outsourcing some of these skills or maybe working with external engineers, it might be important for you to remember that anybody who is an external user may actually need access to applications, etc. And therefore, you might need to go with the external option. For now, we'll simply click on internal and then click on create. And thereafter, you can simply finish this area from an application name, user support, email, the app logo, etc. So once you've provided all that information, you can simply go ahead, click on save and continue. All right. After that is done, we can go and now create our service account. So we head back to the menu and locate the IM admin area. And over here, we should locate the service account. So there we go. We'll simply click on that. And in this area, we can then create our service account. I'll click on create. Right. So the process is the same. We simply have to give it a service account name. So it's going to be Junction Technology. Could I just say Junction T? All right. So after that, we can give it a short description over here. And then we can click on create and continue. I don't select any roles for now. Just continue and then we'll click on done. To allow this account to access user data, we simply have to go and enable that. So we'll click on the account. And below here, we have show domain wide delegation. And we simply have to enable Google Workspace domain wide delegation. Notice such says allows this service account to be authorized to access all user data on a Google Workspace domain. So that's what we want. Once we have done that, we'll click on save. All right. The next part is for us to go and create the key. So we'll click on keys and then we click on add key. And then we go and click on create new key. And here we have JSON. So we simply have to ensure that that radio button is clicked over there. And then we click on create. 
and there we go. So we simply can go and save that key in order for us to be able to access it for each and every task that we may need to do within our environment. I'll simply close that and we should be good to go. So that's all I had for you and I'll see you next time.